Hello, welcome to this Fab Lab Maker Hub video on building a geodesic dome. Well, you should have got your geodesic dome kit by now, and it should come either in a plastic bag like this with all the parts, or on four separate sheets, and you're gonna to have to punch out the parts yourself. Either way, what we need to do first of all is sort out all of the parts. So I'm just gonna do that and speed up the video to save a bit of time. Okay, so now we have all our pieces organized, let's work out what we actually have. We open up the sheet in front of us. Um, what we have is 10 of the six nodes, hubs, 10 of these six node hubs. We have six of the five node hubs, and we have 10 of the four node hubs as well, 10 of the four node hubs. There we go. Um, we should have 30 of the short struts, little short struts, and 35 of the long struts. So these are called the A strut, the short ones, and these are called the B strut, the long ones. Okay, now we have a diagram of our dome here. And we have a few instructions down the bottom. The first instruction is assemble top pentagon highlighted in red first. So when you construct a dome, it's always easiest to actually build the dome from the top down rather than from the bottom up. And there's a good reason for this. When you're building a dome, you need the dome to kind of like raise up in the air. So lift up a layer at a time. And if you start at the bottom, it's harder to keep the structure together because it's a wider base. So you start off with a smaller section at the top and then build outwards and upwards. And then it's a lot easier to build a dome. And that goes for any dome, even a small one here or even a large dome that you might build, you know, outside. So, okay, let's get started and try and build our first pentagon. So we need to start off with a five node hub to start with. And the five node hub always have a short A strut. So every time you see a five node hub, you always need an A strut. Now the way these go together is they click together here and push in. They just tight fit like that. Kind of a push in and they're together. So I'm just gonna grab these and just go round and do that on each of these. So there we have our first part of the dome. So this is going to be the top of the dome. The next thing we need to do is get some six node hubs and put them on the end of each one of these. So a six node hub on the end of each one. There we go. So that's starting to look good. So now, connecting up between the six node hubs are the longer B struts. So I'm gonna grab a B strut here, and this is where a bit of finessing might be needed to pull this out and just put them together like that. 
grab a B-strut, push it in, it might be a bit of a tight fit but if you just give them a little wiggle they tend to go in. As you're doing it you'll notice that the, that the dome will want to start trying to creep outwards but you have to kind of pull them in to, together and it's this kind of tension that makes the dome nice and strong. As we go, there we go. One thing I should have said is that when you do the pieces, always make sure that you do them this way around with the notches facing downwards rather than with the notches facing upwards. So if I show you here on this one, so the notch is facing downwards rather than upwards. So we want the notches facing downwards. So the last one here might be the trickiest one to get in. Um, push that in there and then we need to just try and pull that around and push that in. So now we've made our first pentagon shape. Okay, that's exactly like we have in the instructions. We have the, the red pentagon there. So, <clears throat> now we have that, we need to work outwards and downwards. So it doesn't really matter kind of where you start, but the thing you have to bear in mind is each one of these six node hubs now has three empty spaces. And the way that it works is, well, I used a wrong hub here, I've just noticed. Aha, don't you make the same mistake. I used a five node hub instead of a six node hub. So I need to put that one on there. And put that one back in there. There we go. So, as I was saying, each one of these six node hubs has three empty spaces. And when we're connecting up the next layers, the middle space always has a short strut. It always has an A strut. And again, make sure that the notches are pointing, pointing downwards. So I'm going to do the A struts first, just so I know what I'm doing. So A strut in the middle, 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 and A strut in the middle. There we go. So now I can't get confused because I have all my A struts. At all the other struts are going to be B struts, the longer struts. So we need the B struts. So I'm going to connect the B strut there and the B strut here. And a B strut here. And a B strut here. B strut here. B strut here. B strut here. Yes, that is a B-strut. There we go. And there. Okay, so I have all of my B-struts in place now. So we're starting to see the dome kind of take shape now. 
what we need to do now is put on our, um, our nodes at the end here. Now, bear in mind, we always say that um, five node hubs, that's five node hub, just there, five node hub, they always connect up to, to, to an A strut. So we're going to connect up the five node hubs to our short A struts that are pointing outwards. So we should have one, two, three, four, five. So that's the last of our five node hubs. So there we go. So we have another five node hub connected up to the, the A strut that was point, pointing out. Now we have our B strut coming down here and we're going to have to try and put our six node hubs in these gaps here. So if you see here, the six node hub will go on two slots there on the on the hub. So let me try and fit these in again. You might need to just kind of like prise them apart a little bit. Let's just have a go here. So that one in there. And that one in there. Just a little bit of pushing to get them in. Okay, let's grab another one. Do that here. Like this. So as you can see, I have the five node hub on the end of the A strut and then a six node hub connecting the two B struts there. And I'm just going to carry on around putting on my six node hubs just here. So again, we're just working our way sort of around and down in a kind of spiral fashion. And I've used up the last of my hubs. Might be the tightest one to go in. There we go. Okay, so our dome is starting to look quite good here. So you can see the uh, the triangles we've formed. Um, we have we have our kind of pentagon shape. I'll show you over on this here. We have our kind of pentagon shape, and then we have our our triangles coming here. So these triangles here are all. B-sided triangle. So these are an equilateral triangle, whereas these triangles are different size shapes. These are the isosceles triangles. So we have two different sizes of triangles making up our dome, connecting from our five to our six. Okay, so now we just need to work our way out and down again. So first thing we want to do is connect up around the bottom here of these ones. So these are all connected with A struts from the five node hub to the six node hub. So I'm just going to go around the bottom with the with these struts and connect up around the bottom. That and you notice they kind of go in a in a kind of an up down up down fashion. Again, make sure that you get the struts the right way around with the notches pointing downwards. That is important. Otherwise, it won't actually fit together.
And you notice the dome is actually looking very strong now. The structure is really starting to come together and become a really strong structure. Again, when you start to get towards the end, you might start pulling these things out, just prise them in a, bit, a little bit. Okay, so we have all those ones in. Now we just have the last layer to do. So what we need to do is go around and look at each of the hubs along the bottom and work out which is a five node and which is a six node. Now, if you remember the rule, every five node hub has a short A struct connected to it. So we have to go around and try and find the, the five node hubs and connect up a struts to those. So that's a, that one there is a five node hub. One, two, three, four, five. So this one has to have A struts connected to it. So we'll put A struts on these ones. So if we go around and find all of the five node hubs, usually it goes five node, six node. So that's one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we skip that one. We move on to the next one, one, two, three, four, five. So the five node hubs have the A struts connected to them. Just like that. We keep going around. That's a six node hub. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's a five node. We connect up the five node hub. A struts. There. That's good. Any more? Let's have a look. There should be one more moving. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Five note hub. And one more. Uh, one, two, yeah, one, two, three, four, five. So there we go. Okay, so that's all of our five note hubs with the A struts connected to them. What we need to do now is find the B struts and connect those up onto the six node hubs. So let's put those ones on there. B strut and a B strut. Okay, so now we have the A's and the B's all connected up. So the last thing to do is to take our four node hubs, which are going to be the base, and connect those to each one of the, the junctions at the bottom down here along, along there. So it might be easy to do this if you flip the dome upside down. And we can start over here, put that one in there, put that one in there. You may notice that, that some of these could be a bit stiffer, they could be the stiffest ones, because now the structure of the dome is trying to pull the sides in. So it's really starting to make the dome strong by putting these final pieces in down the bottom. So if you like, find these are the tightest ones to fit in. But don't worry, it will all come together in the end. So you kind of clip in, we can worry about pulling it all together once we have all the parts in.
There we go. Okay, so last thing to do now is to connect up all the struts along the bottom. So all those struts along the bottom are the B struts. So these, these ones here that we've got left. And the way these connect along the bottom is a little bit different to the ones at the top. They, they don't connect on their edge, they connect on their side. So if I show you here, they kind of connect, they're going to connect like this along the bottom. So I'll just put one of them in. And you'll notice that they, again, they have to kind of point inwards. The, the slots there like that. And this is where you might need to just pull them apart a little bit just to kind of get them get them connected. go around you can kind of push them push them together and kind of push the parts kind of join everything together if you ever kind of like got lego bricks and tried to push them together to make them nice and secure same kind of idea just kind of push them together to try and make them secure make sure i get that the right way around almost got it the wrong way around them apart a little bit and actually you see there that one kind of came apart a little bit if you see here this one kind of came apart a little bit um it's okay we can deal with that we can push them back together again and make sure they're nice and tight in as you get towards the very last couple it is going to get quite tight And the last piece, the very last piece, put that one in there, that one in there, actually running neat quite easily. So there we have our completed geodesic dome. Now what you might need to do, that came up a part down the bottom there, is just kind of like make sure all the parts are nice and secure. I can see a couple of pieces down here that aren't quite slotting together, just need to kind of fit them together, push down from each of the layers, just to kind of settle it all together like that. And if they start coming apart in there, you can just go around and just kind of push them in on the nodes, push down on the nodes, and they should kind of all push together. So there we have our completed geodesic dome. So you could decorate that, paint it, maybe cover it. Um, you could cut out some triangles and stick them on and make your own dome. Um, Customise it however you want. Um, can look quite nice if you put a, a light underneath it. I'll just show you here, I have a little LED light here. Um, if you put a little LED light under there, you can turn it into a, a nice lamp. And uh, if you can cover that with, uh, with paper, uh, it could light up from the inside. Um, it's a nice little idea. Okay. So thanks for watching, and I hope that you uh, were able to put your dome together successfully. Um, if there's any uh, questions, you can leave them on our Facebook page and we'll get back and answer them for you.
So hopefully by now you've had a chance to build your dome. So I thought I'd just give you a quick presentation on the history of geodesic domes and the man who kind of popularized them back in the 1950s and 60s. So the geodesic dome was actually invented in 1923 by a German engineer called Walther Bowersfeld. He worked at the time for a company called Zeiss who made lenses for cameras and telescopes and projectors. Uh, they're still in existence today and they probably make the uh, camera that's inside your smartphone. They wanted to build a planetarium at the time to show off their latest projector. So Walther decided that a dome would be the best shape. It was also going to be the quickest and easiest construction method. Now the planetarium was built on the roof of the Zeiss factory and they made it from metal rods and then coated it in concrete. When it was finished, the general public flocked to see the futuristic structure on the roof and the astronomy show that was shown inside. Unfortunately, or fortunately, it was so popular that after three years, they had to knock down the dome on the roof and rebuild it in a park outside the town just to accommodate all the crowds. After that, we had World War II and geodesic domes kind of got forgotten about until a man named Bucky rediscovered them in 1950. So who was Bucky? Well, Richard Buckminster Fuller, to give him his proper name, he was an engineer, an architect, an inventor, designer, and a futurist. Bucky was born in 1895 and he died in 1983, aged 87. He preferred to be called Bucky all his life. Nobody ever called him Richard, he always was called Bucky. When he was only 28 years old, he invented what he called the car of the future, which he called the Dymaxion car. And Dymaxion stood for dynamic maximum tension. Now it had two wheels at the front and one wheel at the back, and people who drove it were very tense because the car swayed about wildly if driven really fast. Only three of the cars were ever made because they all crashed. Now Bucky had lots of ideas, lots and lots of big ideas. One of his big ideas in the 1950s and 60s was to try and do more with less. He was very concerned that humans were using too much of the Earth's natural resources. Now you have to remember this was a long time before we even thought of global warming and the climate change and things like that. He was worried that uh, the environment was getting destroyed by uh, advances in technology and humans. He coined the term Spaceship Earth um, and wrote a handbook for it, the operating manual for Spaceship Earth. Now Walt Disney was so impressed he decided to build a whole section in Disneyland called Spaceship Earth in a centre called the Epcot Centre which stood for the experimental community of tomorrow. It was going to be the sort of ideal way we were going to live in the future. One of Bucky's biggest ideas was for affordable housing. He used the Dymaxion concept to create what he called the Dymaxion House. This house unlike usual houses which were built on site was to be built in a factory in sections and then assembled on site very quickly. Only a few of the houses remain intact today um, but they were circular and kind of dome shaped roofs and they inspired the idea in him for the geodesic dome. So in 1954 Bucky patented a design for a geodesic dome. He was taking an idea that engineers used to use to build bridges called trusses and he put a group of triangles together in a certain shape and arrangement to create a sphere or a ball shape. So the geodesic dome had some amazing properties. Um, it was extremely strong but it was also lightweight. The triangles created a very stable structure and the sphere creates the largest amount of space for the least amount of surface area. 
Now the basic geometry of a geodesic dome is based on a shape called an icosahedron. A funny word, icosahedron. The icosahedron is made up of 20 equilateral triangles. Now that's triangles where all the sides have the same length. When you increase the number or the frequency of triangles inside one of the original triangle shapes, the overall shape gets more complex. If you look at the picture on the right hand side, you can see the basic shape of an icosahedron. And inside one of the triangles, there's it's been kind of subdivided by three green triangles. Now you can keep dividing and dividing and dividing and adding more triangles or increasing the frequency of triangles. And as you do so, the shape becomes more complex. And as you add more and more triangles, it becomes more ball or dome shaped. Our dome kit that we've built has two different triangle shapes and it's called a V2 frequency dome. You can have V3, V4, V5, all the way up to lots of higher numbers. And as the more triangles you add, the more complex and larger the dome can become. So in the late 1960s and 70s, dome building reached a peak with geodesic domes being built for everything from restaurants, sports arenas to houses and even an Antarctic base station. That Antarctic base station has actually been standing for over 30 years and it gets beaten about by some of the worst weather in the world and yet it's still standing. So just goes to show how strong domes are. Now if you're wondering where I can see a dome other than the one that you've just built, there is actually a geodesic dome not far from uh, Manor Hamilton in the Organic Centre in Ross Inver. They built a geodesic dome and they turned it into a greenhouse. Geodesic domes have been used in people's gardens as greenhouses for, for quite a while. Okay, thanks for watching and hope you had fun building your geodesic dome kit. Well, we'd love to see some of the domes that you've made and maybe even if you could decorate them in some way, paint them or cover them in something, that would be really good too. Um, if you want to take a picture of them and post them onto our Facebook page, the address is on the screen right now. Um, post a picture there and uh, we'll be sure to take a look. So everybody have a really good summer and uh, enjoy yourselves. Bye.